Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I have missed you guys so much. I can't even begin to express or explain how much I miss you guys. There's definitely energy that's exchanged when you're making a video and I definitely miss exchanging that energy with you guys and just having that extra added interaction. I asked you guys on Instagram to please submit your questions so that we can kind of do this video together and sort of just kick me in the butt. Like, let's do this. Let's Let's turn on the camera. I'm gonna try to get to everyone's questions. Here's the first one is from Lipstick and Tacos and she says, how do you stay looking so young and flawless? We all need to know your secrets. Thank you, Lipstick and Tacos. You always look young and flawless as well. I am 37 years old, so I do feel like I look young for my age. Dr. Oz said that having an orgasm every day will keep you young. So an orgasm a day keeps a wrinkle away is what I say. Um, no, but in all seriousness, I do feel that because I'm not necessarily consistent with the products that I use, that that does help my skin looking young. And what I mean by that is that, you know how when you do workouts, you have to do different types of workouts in order to keep your muscles working because they have like this crazy memory. I kind of feel like in the sense of skincare, for me actually, this is just intuitive. It's nothing that I've heard or anything like that. I just feel that you need to keep trying new things on your face. And maybe trying new things isn't necessarily the proper word, but using new products on your face because it sort of keeps your skin trying different sorts of minerals, trying different sorts of products, and it doesn't get used to the same thing over and over. I really feel that that has helped me a lot um, throughout the years. On top of that, I do try to be as consistent as possible with washing and taking care, moisturizing and taking care of my skin. Applying SPF is a really big part of that. I'm not perfect, so there are times, sometimes there's periods where I get kind of lazy and I don't take the proper steps to take care of my skin. But you know, my skin is really forgiving and as soon as I start putting a lot of energy into it, it just bounces back and I think that can be said for anybody and, and any part of their life whether they're on a diet as soon as you put energy into something you begin to see the changes and I think that skin is the same way it's pretty forgiving if you start to put energy into it which is what's great so if you haven't been taking care of your skin then it's never too late to start taking care of your skin now I did already mention SPF I just want to say that once again is SPF 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 and then another trick I would say, or secret, or whatever you want to call it, is drinking tons and tons and tons of water because that helps push the toxins out of our bodies, out of our skins, etc. Next question is from Lucy G11. She's asking, how did you transition into a full vegan lifestyle? Was there a time period where you weaned off? If so, how long? And do you miss scrambled eggs? So for those of you that don't know, I just recently turned um, vegan a, a little over a month ago, but I do have to preface this by saying that I was vegan years ago, so the transition might have been a little easier for me than those that have never been vegan ever. I did cold turkey full-blown vegan with the exception of my coffee creamer. My coffee creamer was one of those really big bottles like a gallon or something. I don't know if it's a gallon, like a liter. I don't know. I'm so attached to the ritual of making my coffee in the morning. That creamer has been part of that ritual for so long that that was like really hard for me to just throw away. I did wean myself off of that. What I mean by that is I simply finished the bottle and then went on a search for another one. Do you miss scrambled eggs? I haven't missed anything to be completely honest. And I don't want this to sound like weird, like I'm like this perfect person that was able to cold turkey it. I have to say that when I watched What the Health, that's why I became a vegan, by the way. I, I know I didn't mention that, but I watched What the Health and it was like a light switch and I was done with the exception of my creamer, okay? Um, but it was definitely a light switch. Like I couldn't look at food in the same way, nor could I enjoy it in the same way. It was a very quick transition, not just for me, but for my partner as well. 
Um, so I definitely recommend that if you're looking to transition into a more vegan diet that you watch What the Health. It is transforming lives all over the world. Ellie Creates asks, how do you handle having a platform with your husband? Is he ever like, nope, you're not wearing that or you're not posting that picture? That's so funny that you say that because that was a problem, I think more so in the beginning of our relationship. He would just like raise his eyebrows or make a smart comment about a certain outfit. Um, but then I think as our relationship grew and he understood, like he knew that there was like nothing to be insecure about because I think that a lot of that behavior stems from insecurity. Um, when he realized that there was nothing to be insecure about, he was definitely more comfortable with trusting the way I was going to dress. And it's not like I dressed super provocative, although I did dress more provocative before I had my son. Um, I'll actually put up a picture of one that actually started the conversation of you're not going to tell me how to dress type thing. Um, uh, he knows I'm also kind of hard-headed and no one's gonna tell me what to do But I think it's it's pretty normal in the relationship to have those feelings of like, you know I don't know. We went through it. Yes. Yes to answer your question So Darlene.1111 my little sister asks how has your body skin changed since going vegan? Also, what item of food do you miss the most if any? Um, how has my skin and body changed since going vegan? Well, I definitely feel a change in my skin. I do feel more, I feel softer. I feel more like, um, not plumper. I don't know what the, what the word would be, but more like bouncy. I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but I do feel more like luster coming out of my skin and it's definitely a lot softer. In terms of the changes that I'm noticing on my body, I definitely see the weight loss that I've had. Um, I especially can tell the weight loss around my rib cage and in my waist and in my thighs, like the lower part of my thighs closer down towards my knee. And what item of food do you miss the most? My coffee creamer. I haven't been able to find a coffee creamer that satisfies me in the way that my old coffee creamer did. So drinking coffee hasn't really been that important to me lately. If I don't find a creamer that satisfies me here pretty soon, then I can see myself almost letting go of coffee, which makes me actually kind of sad saying. Okay, next question is from Jay Delilah. Please talk about pranic healing. How are you introduced to it? What it is? and how it helps you in the day to day. I've been wanting to sage my house and myself as a start, but there's so much decluttering I'd like to do first. Pranic healing, for those of you that don't know, is a way to heal using energy. You don't have to be with someone in order to practice pranic healing on them. You can do it from a distance. I was introduced to pranic healing because a really good friend of mine is a pranic healer and I needed some healing. I was going through some stuff and she suggested like, why don't I just heal you? And it was distance healing and I couldn't believe what I was feeling. I was in complete shock and disbelief in the healing that I was receiving. It was absolutely incredible. The next day I made my fiance do it. Then I called my friends. I was like, you guys have to get healing from Marcela. Like you just have to do it. I was so intrigued by it and I was continuously getting healing from her, like receiving it ever so often when I felt I needed it mainly to just clear energy, um, clear space, to ground me, to center me, to give myself clarity mentally, emotionally, and physically. It has been a total dream. Um, and I had been talking to her about my spirituality and wanting to dig a lot deeper and how I feel a calling to be an active participant in the spiritual world and a communicator of it of some sorts. I don't know what that's going to look like exactly, but I know sort of I have an internal compass that when I come close to it, it's almost like falling in love. Like I can just feel the connection and I know that I need to work in the spiritual area. So she suggested that I start taking pranic healing classes and I became a certified healer of the first level. She's like way advanced. 
So it has been such a blessing to be able to clean myself, heal myself, and also to be able to practice chronic healing on my friends and family um, has been just such a gift. But I do have to say that I still go to Marcela for a lot of my healing because it's nice to just, you know, relax and allow someone else to help you when you need help. I've been shut down from a lot of the things that used to surround me just to ground myself and really focus on what it is that I want to do in this lifetime. I know we're getting really deep right now. I do want to say, Jay, my intuition right now is telling me that you need to go ahead and sage your space. Don't wait for you to have to declutter in order to get to the place where you want to sage. Like, you're being called to sage your, your home for a specific reason and I feel like you need to go ahead and do that sage yourself first and then sage your family members if they're open to it if not then just go ahead and move forward with saging your home my intuition is telling me to tell you that the decluttering is going to come afterward and even the saging of all of the the clutter that surrounds you the saging is going to help you decipher what needs to stay and what needs to go in your life so go ahead and move forward with the saging and the decluttering will follow keep following your intuition like trust that trust what was telling you you need to sage yourself and you need to sage your home be aware of when you begin to make excuses for why you're not following through with what your intent is telling you to do. So in this case, the excuse was to declutter first. Um, so you don't need to do that. Just go ahead and sage. My daughter is asking, what is your favorite place to take your friends and family when they come and visit? I really feel like this is a trick question. Because I have gone vegan, um, there is no really favorite place to take my friends and family. There was pre-vegan. I feel like this is a trick question, Elizabeth. What are you trying to do to me, huh? I don't like taking my friends to like all of the Hollywood like touristy stuff. It annoys me. And I understand that they want to go and see that, but no, I, I really like to show them food because LA has some of the best food in the world. But right now I just don't have a favorite place. I need to find that one vegan dish that I can share with my friends. One of my really good friends, Jessica Resendiz text me some questions love you Jess she asks small circle or big circle that's a really great question I think that the answer is quality circle and sometimes a quality circle can definitely consist of a big circle and sometimes a quality circle can consist of a small circle right now for me it is definitely a small circle and it is all quality jess also asks what is your biggest pet peeve i think my biggest pet peeve is being late i don't like to be late and i don't like for other people to be late sometimes that is almost impossible in la you can leave an hour early before you're supposed to go somewhere and it can only be five miles away and guess what sometimes you're just late you can't help it here it's awful when when are you getting married so my fiance and I are engaged it's like we're married we live together let's be real we have a baby I don't know I think we really want for our son to be part of the wedding um, I really just have this vision of him walking me down the aisle but also my dream wedding is for me to have a wedding in my home in my backyard um, so maybe we'll get married when we buy a house. God willing, you know, that will be very soon. Daily vlogs in the future. I actually thought about that when I was trying to like get the motivation to just hit the record button and just get back into it. I thought, what if I started off with daily vlogs? If you guys think that daily vlogs are a good idea, leave that in the description bar below. Maybe I'll start a new channel that is only specifically for my daily vlogs. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, micheladas or margaritas? 100% micheladas without a doubt. In my 20s, margaritas all the way. J underscore warrior, what's up my love? Asks, do you have a morning routine and has it changed since Benny? That is such a great question. I have recently freed myself of all routines as I practice living in the flow, which has been so freeing and such a relief. I feel like I'm coming into 
what I am supposed to become, what I saw myself as, just growing spiritually. And part of that is living in the flow, no routines. And Jose in LA says, who is your favorite compadre? Well, duh, you are my love. You are my absolutely favorite compadre. My Sweets 0816 asks, how much weight have you lost since going vegan and how long have you been doing it for? I have been vegan, like I said, a little over a month. Um, right before I was vegan, I weighed myself and two weeks into being vegan, I weighed myself and I had lost five pounds. Because I'm such a shorty, five pounds is a really big deal on me. I haven't weighed myself recently, so I don't know how much I've lost from the time I've started. Fat Cat underscore 82 says, I've always wanted to ask, but I'm afraid that people will quickly jump on the defense when I'm just really curious as to other people's thoughts. So please help. Can you be vegan and pro-choice? Of course, I know you can, but don't the two somewhat contradict, and if not, why? Okay, so she's asking, can you be vegan and pro-choice? I understand why you're asking this question, and I do think it is something to maybe sort of think about in some way. However, I'm going to kind of flip this on you real quick. I do feel called to say in the same way that I can't tell you to be vegan and what you should put in your mouth. I can, but I shouldn't. It's none of my business. In that same way, we can't ask somebody to be pro-choice or pro-life. So what I wanna say, I guess, it's nowhere in our place, is it, to tell someone else what to do. Whether we believe that what they're doing is wrong or right, it is nowhere our place. The only thing that we should be focusing on is looking internally and trying to understand what we can do to be better people. It's like that saying, if you want to change the world, then change yourself. So while I understand and I respect your question, and I think it was very brave of you to ask, I do have to say that I don't think that this is a topic that we should be discussing. I don't think it's right for me to discuss what other women should do with their bodies. I don't want people discussing what they think I should do with my bodies. I don't want anyone telling me what they believe I should eat or what I shouldn't eat. Um, I want to be respected in the decisions that I make. And in the same way, I want to respect you in the decisions that you make, whether it's eating vegan or whether it's eating meat every single day or whether you're for pro-life or you're for um, pro-choice. Either way, I'm gonna respect you and I'm gonna have nothing but love for you. <sighs> that was heavy. Valerie P underscore A. She says, what's it like parenting an adult? How do you feel with situations or life decisions she makes that you may not approve of? Parenting an adult is extremely difficult. You're not gonna be successful at parenting an adult. Here's the thing, I have to look at my little adult like if it is me. My mom still, my mom as of recently has tried to parent me and that has been very detrimental to our relationship because here's what happens. As parents, we want to try and get our children to live the lives that we didn't live and fulfill our personal dreams. And when we do that and our kids actually fulfill our personal dreams, then we're happy but our child is unhappy. If we allow our children to fulfill their own personal dreams and desires, then they will live a happy life instead of living the life that we as parents want them to live. My daughter actually is going to school for criminal justice. I'm so proud of her. She has amazing grades. She's doing great. She wants to become a cop. And when she first came to me with this, I was very upset. There's no parent really that wants their child to face some sort of danger. And for me, that's all I could think about is you're going to risk yourself at the cost of what? Like, I just couldn't understand. And I had to come to a place where I just have to respect her decision and her calling in life and let her find her own way. God willing, nothing will happen to her. 
Um, obviously, I still have like secret desires that, that that will go away and she'll want to do something else, but really there's nothing I can do. I just have to respect her. Um, and then your last question is, do you co-parent well with her father? And if so, any tips on how to do so? I do not co-parent with her father. We never did. We were very young. We probably wouldn't... If someone asked us or told us to co-parent at that age, we would probably not understand what that even means. Um, I, obviously, my biggest recommendation is to definitely co-parent. Don't be like us. It was a big mistake. I think we confused Elizabeth with a lot of things that we were trying to teach her. Um, and she's, have, she's had to learn how to navigate through that herself. I think co-parenting is very important. Unfortunately, we were not mature enough to think that way. Insta Thrifting says, what's your take on all the gentrification going on in different neighborhoods? I do have to say that I think gentrification is really difficult to watch. Um, it's difficult to hear stories of people that are being pushed out of their neighborhoods, of business owners that are being pushed out of their neighborhoods. Um, it can cause a lot of emotions for me like anger and just a lot of negative emotions Here is what my intuition is telling me to the way my intuition is telling me to understand gentrification and what is happening today is that we all want to expand as humans we all have this natural desire to become bigger and greater in our day-to-day -day lives. And I really think that if I was to be facing gentrification where I'm being pushed out of my neighborhood, that could happen tomorrow because I live in the hood, then I have to trust in my own expansion and trust that I have brought upon this energy to myself in order to expand and become a better person and reach goals. There have been so many times where someone has cut me off of something and I could either get mad at them for cutting me off or I can learn to understand that this is part of my expansion and that being cut off from that I don't have to necessarily get bitter about it, but I have the opportunity to grow from it and become something greater and bigger than what I was when I was attached to that. I know that that might not be like a popular response, but I do always work to look at everything through the eyes of love, compassion, and empathy. And I always try to find the positive energy in whatever circumstance Otherwise, I go down a really deep, dark hole and I start to get bitter and angry and upset at circumstances that I really cannot control instead of focusing on what it is that I can control. And that is my attitude, my energy, how I move forward and what I put out into the universe. Do you think monogamy is more difficult for men? That question is from New Jerk City underscore. Um, giving it to me back to back, huh? Okay, so do I think monogamy is more difficult for men? Off the bat, I want to say yes. And I think it's much more difficult for men because as a society, we have conditioned our men to be that way. A lot of the times I feel we raise men to not have to deal with repercussions of making little small mistakes. Like, um, we protect our little boys like, oh, he's just being a boy, you know, all of that conditioning starts from really early on. I don't think that all men are like that. I do think that there are men who have been raised to respect women, to respect love as a whole, to respect what it means to communicate. If there's disrespect in the monogamous relationship, then that has to be due to lack of communication where one person is unhappy and trying to find satisfaction outside of the relationship. CND Liliana says, breastfeeding a toddler and baby led weaning, please. Okay, these are both really great topics. I believe that we all intuitively know what is right and what is wrong. What is right for me may not be right for you. What is right for you may not be right for me. For me personally, I do have to say that I am going to allow Benicio to wean himself off of breastfeeding. So that what that means is that I am probably I am already going to go into breastfeeding a toddler. Did I imagine myself breastfeeding a toddler before this? No, I was praying that I could at least make it to the year. I didn't know that I was 
easily going to make it into the year. I am excited to be able to bond with him a little longer. One year of 365 days of the first year of your life is absolutely nothing. A year is nothing to me as an adult. I can only imagine the first 365 days of your life. You're still in need of your mom. You're in need of bonding. You're in need of attachment. I wouldn't want to take that away from him too early. With that being said, I have begun to set parameters around when I breastfeed and when I don't. For example, in the morning when it's coffee time, he's not allowed to have Chi Chi time. Baby lead weaning was such a great gift for me. Initially, we began to feed Benicio with purees. I had heard a little bit about baby lead weaning, but I didn't understand it. I think I thought that baby lead weaning happened after you fed a baby puree. I didn't understand that baby lead weaning is actually what happens right when you start feeding the baby solids. So that means that you go straight from the breast or the bottle to start feeding them solids, which sounds kind of crazy because we're so conditioned to believe that we're supposed to like feed the baby the gerb little things or whatever um, we began to cook um, Benicio his purees I wanted to make sure that it was all made by me etc and he was not enjoying them at all and when we would eat I would watch him lunge at the table like he wanted something and I would give him his little you know sweet potato puree that I made and he would just hate it he didn't want it um, so then I started to do some research and I realized that baby lead weaning is you just give them solids right off the bat And so I did that this was of course before we were vegan. So I just gave him like a piece of chicken piece of avocado long piece of avocado and I had to trust that he was gonna mash it with his gums I loved that experience. I think it's like, for me, it was the best experience. It's not even something that I wanted to do. It's something that he wanted to do. He was actually the decider of that. He decided that. Um, so yeah, I love baby lead weaning. If you guys want more information on baby lead weaning, I think it deserves its own video. Leave that in the description bar below and I'll tell you what types of food I fed him and how what the experience was like, etc. Okay, losers says hello. I think that's Wesley. Is that your how? What's your IG? I think it's losers say hello. Um, what's what does feminism mean for you? How are you raising your son to be a feminist, and how are you teaching? teaching him to be woke in today's society and political environment? This is such a great question. What feminism means to me off the bat, just off the bat, it just means equality and it means respect. And it means being able to be at the table, speaking my mind, respected while I'm speaking my mind and not dismissed or overlooked or, you know, any of that. I just think that it's um, equality is all feminism is. And it's embracing who I am as a woman, what I feel, what I have to give without being apologetic about it, without having to say, like, I'm sorry that I have breasts. I'm sorry that I menstruate. I'm sorry that I have hips. I'm sorry... You know, without having to apologize, like, well, that is what feminism means to me. How are you raising your son to be a feminist and how are you teaching him to be woke in today's society and political environment? So because I am a strong woman, I think that by default, I am teaching my son to be a feminist. I think that I feel secure in my femininity because I watched my mom um, I was raised by a woman who was a really strong woman, who was extremely independent, who knew how to take care of herself and um, knew how to progress in her day and age, in today's day and age. Like, I just watched a kick-ass woman do her thing. And so I definitely want to be a reference for Benicio in terms of what a strong woman looks like and how you should treat a strong woman. I also think that the relationship that I have with Alfonso, Benicio's father, plays a big part in that role where he can see how you respect a woman, how you treat a woman, how you love a woman, how you participate in the household duties, how nothing, not one particular job in this house belongs to the woman and not one particular job in this house belongs to the man. We both contribute to it equally. So I think by default, I am teaching him how to be um, 
a feminist. I'm raising a feminist, 100% for sure. Uh, second part of your question is, how are you teaching him to be woke in today's political environment? I think that this is another thing that's kind of like by default. It's not something that I'm actually like directly teaching him, like, yo, you need to be woke or anything like that. But it's more of asking questions all the time. And um, in our household, we ask a lot of questions. Alfonso is much more interested in politics than I am so he's constantly reading politics and reading what's going on and he you know then talks to me about them and I don't care what his views are where he's coming from I constantly question it I challenge and I question and in the same way where I you know say something at home and he questions and he challenges like we don't take each other's words as like oh that's what it is you know this is the way Alfonso feels so this is the way I'm gonna feel we're not like that we're two individual people and we each have our own opinions and we question each other's opinions and I think that that is the biggest contributor to being woke it's like when I was small I was taught not to ask questions not to question my parents not to question you know any authority or any type of adult and I'm definitely raising Benicio to be different because um you know even though I was taught to not question authorities I still did I was considered a rebel I was considered a really bad kid I was considered a loser I was considered all of these things and at the end of the day none of that shit was true you know what I'm saying it was just me questioning and wanting to understand why things were the way they were so I think when he watches us interact and question each other he's gonna understand that he has permission to question everything that's surrounding him including things that I try to implement and teach him you know so yeah guys these were great questions I still have so many more questions but I don't want to have a, like an hour-long video of this because I know you guys got things to do etc so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and break this up and I will be answering your questions at a later day so this is part one we're just stay tuned for part two I love you guys so much I cannot wait to keep doing videos for you guys I'm gonna do this in the flow I'm not gonna come up with like a schedule or I'm not gonna do that to myself but thank you thank you so much I really would appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already if you are I love you thank you for being patient and um, comment like you know the drill yeah and I hope you guys are having like a freaking dope ass day and if not just make it a dope ass day you know that's all you got to do is just like change your frequency tune into like whatever is going to make you have a dope day love you